what's up, Magic family? KG Smooth. We are about to go behind the magic with some R&B royalty. You know, we jam his slow jams at night inside the quiet storm. And he is going to be featured on a brand new episode of this new season of Unsung on TV One uh, this Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, the R&B king, that is Keith Washington. How you doing, my guy? Hey, what's up, man? I'm good, man. Good. Man, I'm telling you, technical, this this is not my thing, right? <laughs> Listen, don't worry about it. You know, we've been in a um, we've been doing it this way for about a year now. It's still some technical things, you know. I just can't wait for us to yeah. be face to face and and and, oh, and, yeah, and, and that great energy, you know, that that, that that physical energy with each other. So um, uh, how you been doing? How have you been holding up during this whole pandemic? Pandemic. I've been good, man. I mean, you know, it's a, um, all the stuff that we're going through is unexpected, you know what I mean? I mean, it's pandemic and, you know, out of work a lot in, in, in some cases, you know, but overall, you know, um, I'm okay. I'm okay, you know. I just thank God that I got my health and strength and I'm staying out the way, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I, I haven't got my shots yet. I'm waiting, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get it done, you know? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Any new either self discoveries or just some things that, you know, you weren't privy to that, you know, that piqued your interest during this time of being isolated? You know what, man? I um I got tired of spending a lot of money in other recording studios. So what I did, I got real creative and built a recording studio in the house. Nice. Is, is, is that what we see there? Is that your back? back and everything. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So I built a uh, recording studio in my house on my production out of the home here. Um, so where I would know, I live in Vegas. So where I would normally yeah, fly to California. Oh, yeah. So where I would, when I would normally fly to, to LA, the producers fly out here and don't uh, work with me. So uh, we got a new record coming out. I'm very excited about it. And I'm really deep into my, my, um, you know, my lyric content, you know, I mean, this particular moment gave me an opportunity to really buckle down and, and really get creative in concepts and stories when writing songs. So just studying my craft, man, you know? Indeed, indeed. And, and that's great that you still love, you know, to create and make music because it is the universal language. So um, <laughs> tell me about how you're feeling about your episode of Unsung airing this Sunday. I mean, when they approached you, like what, how did it go? How did it feel? And how does it feel? Uh-oh. I think we might have lost him. You lost him? Can you hear me now? Oh, oh there he is. I, um, I, um, to answer your question about how do I feel about doing unsung, I think it's a um, an outlet for entertainers like myself to be seen again and heard again and let the public know that we are still here, despite the way other people look at it. You know, like, you know, has-beens or whatever, whatever, you know. I love to be seen and, and a, lot of, and a lot of opportunities from being seen, especially when you're taking care of yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, um, when they approached me to do it, I... I thought about it and, and the most the most the most toughest part of this was how much of me do I want to tell the world? Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. about my um about my marriages, you know, and, and, and things of that nature. And but I opened up, man, and and do I regret it? No. I think sometimes the public need to understand what a person has been through and hopefully they can walk away with some knowledge that could help them. Mm -hmm. And and you probably inspired them or they probably went through the same thing and your story resonates yeah. um, with them as well. So, so, so it's safe to say that there were um, some things discussed that were triggering for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yes, yes, it was. Yeah. Um, the death of my mom, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, that was, that was, that was, yeah, that was tough. You know, um, 
Yeah, so those are some things I don't want to really give things away. Yeah, no, we don't, we, don't, we don't have to. No, we can move on. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I saw, uh, I think it, it was on YouTube, and uh, Brandon, who was our producer, you know, he was singing Kissing You uh, before you popped on, and now the song was in my head, and I was telling him, I was like, yeah, he said that um, that was a girl song. Can you tell that story? What, what What's the story behind Kissing You being a girl song? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a girl song. I would say that I wrote it for a particular woman by the name of Anita Baker with the intent of giving it to her. So, you know, I because I, well, Anita and I, I know her from Detroit, and, and yeah. you know, she used to sing around the city with a group called Chapter 8. Right. And um, when she became publicly known, the Anita Baker, the Anita Baker, and me knowing her, I always um, wanted to write something for her. I felt that her voice could perform it. I mean, I loved her voice, and so, in the same key, you 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 would had her. She would sing it in the same key as you I did mean, on the. Well, 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 me submitting the song. If it would have got that far, they would we would have made the changes accordingly. You know, if we had to raise the key, we would have raised the key. But I think the song was done in C. But, um, yeah, we would have raised it. But, um, you know, it didn't go down. In fact, she was not even aware that I was writing. I think I told her sometime that I would, I'm going to try to write something for you or whatever, you know. And um, it was interesting because later on in my life, I wind up being represented by the same manager that represents her. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's what's up. So when, when you played it for her, when she heard it, um, she heard it when it was on the radio when I was singing. <laughs> uh, and what did what did she tell you? What did she think? Well, when it was mentioned, you know, I, I really can't remember, man. I can't remember really? we had that conversation. I know I told her that I, I, I'm pretty sure I told her that I I wrote the song for her. I can't remember. I really can't remember. But yeah. she loved the song and she was like, oh, so, you're so, so, you know, and I need to talk, you know, but, yeah. <laughs> um, That's what's up. you know, I, I, and that was not even my direction. That was not, well, it was, I would say it was not my direction. Uh, when people would come by and hear things that I've written, I would skip over that stuff. And, and one day, you know, an executive heard it and I was like, you know, Mr. just to need it. And he was like, are you serious? That's going to open up the world to you if you, if you do it on yourself. And of course, I didn't believe. Yeah. I, you know, well, I wanted to come out on some other kind of turn off the lights, best get cozy. You know what I mean? But unfortunately, you know, and fortunately enough, that song, you know, distributed me to the world. Um, why was it that we only really got like three commercial successful um, albums from you back in the day? Because you were the guy, I think for me, just looking back growing up uh, with all of the R&B cats that were coming out during the New Jack Swing era, um, you were the most debonair out of all of them. Like every time I saw you, like be a video soul or um, in your music videos, you were always, you know, um, buttoned up. But yeah. just looking at the catalog, uh, and we only we only got three. What and how? You know, you know, um, a lot of things to be honest. You know, from personal things in my life, but at the same time, um, Quincy. Um, the side at that time, I think he was shedding Quest records down, mm -hmm. and we was distributed to Warner Brothers. So what happened? I wind up, even though Warner's wanted to sign me direct, it was a friend of mine named Lil Silas that owned Silas Records, the label that Shante Moore mm -hmm. was on and was on, and Aaron Hall and so on and so forth. And him being a very personal friend of mine, we made the move to go over there with MCA, and that became a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So we got caught up in that. And not only that, but the transition that when it turned into hip hop and, and all that stuff became tremendously powerful. You know what I mean? And, and if, if you notice, R&B became a back seat in, instead of the focus front, you know? Right. But um, as I always tell people, you know, you hang in there long enough. You know, they say sling enough shit, something's gonna stick, you know what I mean? So my opportunity to, um, to use Unsung as a vehicle, like I said once before, for people to see me and understand I'm still doing what I do and uh, um, taking care of myself. But uh, for the most part, I got caught up in on it, you know, mm -hmm. that, that transition mm -hmm. of music and so on. So. Is there, um, was there any artist back then that was 
in the background, maybe, you know, doing some writing, maybe, you know, uh, just demoing some vocals, doing sessions that you were around that ended up, you know, blowing up and, and, and being known. I'm sorry, but uh, other artists? Yeah, other artists like, you know, during your, during your come up uh, back in the early 90s or early wow, 90s. Wow, yeah, I'm pretty sure there was. I can't pinpoint them right at this time. Oh, okay. I, I can't, I, um, then I look back and say, wow, well, I remember them when it was, it's a couple, I just can't, I can't pinpoint them right now. But I'm right. sure, but because living in LA, you know, you see, you know, some of the weirdest shit, excuse my expression, or the people, you'd be like, wow, they, you know what I mean? Speaking of weird shit, um, you're in Nevada. I hear a lot of sightings happen in Nevada. Have you ever seen any spacecrafts in the air or something you know, you weird? You leave me alone, man. You let's change the subject because let's change the subject because you know I'm on that. Yeah, that's I, I mean I'm I'm realistically I mean really that's um I'm a real believer in those. Yeah, things. no, that's why I'm I'm like dang like he's in Nevada like it. Listen, I've been paying attention to the skies, okay? People too busy looking down at their phone. They're not paying attention to what's going on up above them. And they're too sleep to realize that there are other beings among us and that <laughs> they have been watching us. Like some of these clouds are just, they're really well, Let me tell you something. Let me tell you this. But, you know, I don't want to freak nobody out, but I'm glad to know that. Oh, I feel, you know, I, I feel this. That's same. why I asked you that, because I'm like, I know he, because I hear about them things coming back and forth in, in Nevada. But well, let me tell you something. I'm a strong believer. I've seen some crazy stuff in my life flying and for the most part looking up. You know, here in Nevada, I haven't seen anything there, but I got a microscope, I have a power scope. So if I, I be looking, because I have a balcony where it looks all over, and I be looking at, because I'm into that kind of stuff, man, you know, and and you know, sometimes you can freak people out, and this is Absolutely. actually the first time I'm ever talking to anybody about it, you know. But and you know, and it's okay for them. Like they'll they'll wake up one day, they'll wake up and they'll be enlightened, and you, you know, know that they're on time because I'm, I'm on mine, and I'm woke, woke, woke. <laughs> like I'm show sure enough woke. Like I'm vibrating. I'm in the fourth, fifth dimension. Like I'm. I'm done with this third dimension. Yeah, right. No right question. Here. Like I've I've elevated. So I get it, but we know it ain't for everybody. Listen, I know that that is my time. Dang. But listen, Magic Family, unsung, Sunday on TV one, eight o'clock. Man, it is going down. K dub, they are featuring the one and only. My man. Keith Washington, man. Man, this was this was awesome. I thank ooh, you. Really. I'm, I'm actually glad that I didn't go there because I thought about it earlier in there because we would have been talking about that and people would have been like, what is wrong with these two? Man, I'm, I'm a strong, true, strong believer in unidentified objects, okay? Hey, um, besides Unsung, any new projects you coming up with? Can people listen to a new single? Like what you got popping besides- uh, we, we, we have a new CD coming out. In fact, when they watch Unsung, they will catch me in the studio um, recording one of the songs that we actually going to release shortly after Unsung. And um, it's an, a, a, a dynamite song and it's straight up R&B, you know? So yeah, so that's what's happening. So we are currently working on a new album. I'm also working on a film right now too, a web series. So oh, we nice. stand productive, brother. Indeed. The R&B debonair, that is Keith Washington. Don't miss Unsung this Sunday, the 11th. Eight o'clock our time uh, on TV One, man. Thank you so much for your time, my brother. You're welcome, man. I appreciate, appreciate you, man. you, Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, Magic Family, I will see you on the radio.